My name is Richard Fessler. I'm a professor of neurological surgery at Rush University Medical Center. I have spent much of my career focusing on two specific areas. One of those areas is developing the surgical techniques to change all open spine surgery into what is called minimally invasive spine surgery. And in fact, we're at the point now where we can do virtually every spinal operation using minimally invasive technique with phenomenal advantages to the patient. Uh, faster recovery, less pain, less pain medicine, fewer complications, virtually eliminated infection as a complication. The second area is doing translational research, uh, moving stem cell transplantation from the bench uh, to the bedside, if you will, uh, in patients with human spinal cord injury. The intent of the original study for patients who had thoracic level spinal cord injuries was simply to demonstrate that it could be done safely, that the operation could be done without harming the patient, that the cells would not cause any additional harm themselves, and that the immunosuppression would not cause any additional harm. And all of those were clearly demonstrated. There were no significant complications whatsoever. As you might expect, in any study that's going to be translated into humans, there has been extensive preclinical studies on those cells. These cells are no exception, and in fact, they have been very extensively studied. They were able to demonstrate that the cells could be transplanted safely into the spinal cord of mice, that they did not create tumors, that they did not create infections. They demonstrated that the cell would live that they would incorporate and grow into the spinal cord, and they demonstrated actual clinical efficacy in the mice themselves. They also demonstrated that all the technological aspects of translating this research into humans could be accomplished and, and could be performed easily, and that is the cells could be frozen, they could be thawed, they could be transported, they could be prepared in an operating room, and they could be safely transplanted into the human being. All of those steps, of course, have to be satisfied before the FDA will approve your study, and there was no problem with any of those uh, st preclinical studies in any way. The safest way to study a transplantation is to do it in the thoracic spine. Why is this safest? Because it's farthest from any of the neuroanatomical structures that actually control function. The legs are controlled in the lower spinal cord, in the lumbar region. The arms are controlled in the cervical region. Nothing is controlled in the thoracic region. It's mostly an area of conduit, except for some sensation, of course. The cervical spinal cord is where all of the action occurs. The key to finding out if transplantation is going to be part of the way we treat patients with spinal cord injury is doing a transplantation in a location where we actually would hope to find some result and that is in an area such as the cervical spinal cord. We really don't expect to get much of a change in thoracic level spinal cord because there is nothing there to change. The motor fibers are located too far away. In the cervical spinal cord, however, the motor fibers are located there. And if we can grow cells one to two centimeters to connect with them, then we might be able to return function in a physiologically significant way for that patient. That could make someone who can't close his hand able to hold a spoon so he can feed himself. It might make that person able to lift his arm so he can help clothe himself. In the thoracic spine, we don't have a chance of achieving those ends. Where we want to get the effect is in the cervical spine. We have to repeat the safety studies in the cervical spinal cord where the, where the real estate, if you will, is, is much more expensive, where we potentially could cause injury if there were going to be a problem. The potential gain is the highest, the potential risk is the highest. Ideally, we would also like to see, at this point, some return of function in these patients.